I'm Shannon Splint. He's in Davenport. Kirby Goodell. And the title of our junior group performance is Estonia's Singing Revolution Notes That Changed the World. Hi, Mr. Conrad. Thanks for coming over. My pleasure. I'm sorry to hear about the passing of your Thank you. Yes, our boy and I had some great times together. You know, we met during the Singing Revolution. What was that? Well, it was an entirely peaceful protest. Not a single drop of blood was shed. From 1987 to 1991, in reaction to the Soviet Union's Glasnost and Paris Striker laws, Estonians gathered in massive peaceful singing demonstrations. This turning point was called the Singing Revolution. Standing out as a successful uprising without fatalities, this amazing demonstration of the power of culture helped liberate Estonia and assisted in bringing down the Soviet Union. Well, um, how did this happen? Well, it all started in 1939, when the Soviets and the Nazis signed the Molotov-Ribbentrop Pact, or the MRP, which divided Europe between the two empires in the event of a war, a war that we now know as World War II. The free country of Estonia was taken by the Soviets. Nearly 50 years had passed, and they still had us in the grip as tight as could be. But then a major turning point was sparked when Mikhail Gorbachev came to power in 1985. He passed Glasnost, free speech, and perestroika, political reforms within the Soviet regime. I remember that many people were very happy about this. Boy, these bread lines are murder. Hey, did you hear? Free speech and relative autonomy. This is our chance. Our chance to do what? Well, Gorbachev said that times are right for change. He didn't say what type of change. I think that times are right for us to try for independence. We'll go straight to the labor camps in Siberia. All my ancestors did. A quarter of the population has. But if we do this entirely peacefully, it will all be legal. We'll have no reason to send us to Siberia. They may have no reason, but that hasn't stopped them in the past. Random citizens have been pulled off the street by the secret police to be slaves. If they have a slight reason, they're going to jump at it. Will they be able to? There's a reason Gorbachev passed these laws. They're a frantic attempt to modernize the Soviet Union in a quickly changing world. And just think of what we'll be free of. No more of these bread lines. No more having to know the right people to get a fresh orange for crying out loud. Yeah, well, we've got company. 40% of the Estonian population, two-fifths, are ethnic Russians. And I'm sure they have every intention of leaving things just as they are. If we try for freedom, they're going to fight back. But we have to go for this. You know what all these Russians are doing to us? They're destroying our culture. We can't even have Christmas trees. Our culture is a beautiful thing. And if the Soviet Union persists for one more generation, it will all be gone. We have one generation to do something, anything. As one of the least populous countries in the world, our only hope was singing. Estonia has a long tradition of singing. Estonians learned to sing before they learned to speak. We do song to defy occupiers in the past, but this tradition had been, had been exploited by the Soviets. Every five years, people come from far and wide together in a loud upidu or song festival. Even though they forced us to sing all sorts of Soviet propaganda, it was still about coming together and national identity. There was one song that united us the most, Muisa Ma Uminiwa, or Land of My Father's Land That I Love, by Gustav Ernesax. This song was our unofficial national anthem. Muisa Ma Uminiwa Glasnost was for real. You see, they thought that only a few dozen people would be brave enough to show up to the demonstration. Instead, a few thousand did, in the first public peaceful protest against the Soviet regime. We shut off the public address system, so instead the people used rolled up newspapers to deliver their speeches. We have to honestly reveal publicly the history of our people. Many things must be reevaluated in this process, and all criminal acts against humanity must be very strongly condemned. The Hervé Park protest, as it was called, built courage and confidence. This was a turn for the better. Now you could go public, talk what you thought, and they wouldn't kill you. Soon there was more. At a 1988 rock concert in Tallinn, 100,000 people declared their hope for the future through song. And suddenly, 
There was this guy in a motorcycle who had our forbidden Estonian flag. In no time at all, flags were blooming everywhere. People who had been hiding them in street group for almost 50 years had brought them to the festival. On September 11, 1988, 300,000 people showed up to a mass rally. I hope the bread isn't too stale today. Oh, hey, were you at the rally last night? Who wasn't? One in three Estonian people were there. Weren't the speeches rousing and the singing beautiful? Culture is triumphant. To quote the activist Haynes Falk. One day, no matter what, we will win. Not with all this division we won't. Everybody's got a different idea of how to do this. The Popular Front, the Estonian National Independence Party, the Heritage Society, their leaders are all scowling at each other and crossing their arms. But no average citizen cares who organized what rally. When 300,000 people stand up and start to sing in unison, you simply cannot stop them. Singing is our fuel for change. We're no longer united as one country. Look at Interfront. The ethnic Russians are protesting in angry mobs to keep things just as they are. Which has more power, angry mobs or peaceful protests? Nobody was sure, but the peaceful protests continued to grow. On the 50th anniversary of the MRP, more than one million Estonians, Latvians, and Lithuanians created a 600-kilometer human chain stretching across the three nations. This event got worldwide coverage. The Soviet Union couldn't do anything to stop us now that the world was watching. With a moderate in the power of the Estonian Communist Party, don't tell anyone. We have been able to make reforms. Estonian is now our official language, the blue, black, and white, our official flag. And if we deny the legality of the MRP, it means everyone is now officially an Estonian citizen and can register to confirm this truth. Now, many people did not agree with Gorbachev. Hardwired and communists believed, among other things, that Gorbachev had not suppressed the Baltic states enough. And so, in August 1991, they staged a coup and arrested Gorbachev. And they cracked down on us. This coup was meant to return the Soviet Union to how it had been. Instead, it destroyed the crumbling Union completely! But I'm getting ahead of myself, aren't I? Tanks stormed into Estonia, heading for the communications towers, the governmental buildings, and the homes of movement leaders. Called upon to defend it, we two policemen arrived at the largest tower, knowing that they were on their way. We Estonians are strongest together. As a newly formed Congress called an emergency meeting, we knew the country's three disagreeing movements were going to have to come together, and fast, to declare independence before it was too late. This we did. Even the Estonian communists were fighting for us. As Congress voted overwhelmingly for independence, I remember staring at the clock on the wall. It was 11.03 p.m., August 20th, 1991. At dawn, the Soviet tanks arrived at the TV tower, and Estonians formed human shields around it. We threatened that, were anyone to enter the tower, we would push a button, and the entire system would fill with Freon gas, killing everyone inside. Now this was a bluff, as it would have killed us too, but it was a bluff that turned the tides of the crackdown. Confused, the Soviet army debated on what to do for the next 12 hours. Meanwhile, Boris Yeltsin, the new president of Russia, denounced the coup, declaring that Russia was seceded from the Soviet Union. The Union had completely collapsed. This was a major turning point in world history, and by singing, we'd help bring it on. I had always believed that we were free, and we had always been free, that this was just a temporary occupation, and it was our destiny. It was always there. And that was how Estonia sank its Estonianness. Now, we can see our impact, how we changed the world by singing. It was a great victory that we had, that we didn't spill one drop of blood. Estonians are again the masters of their own land, and today we are a technological competitor on the world stage. Also, the Baltic singing revolution's success during the late 1980s had given confidence to, to other independence-minded republics, which helped topple the Soviet Union. Who would have known that something as simple as singing could be so powerful in the face of an occupation as brutal as this one? This showed everyone that you don't need guns to overthrow a government. You just need to work with what you've got. And what you have the same. Mówi samo.